God will be sharing what you see by the hand. Just make sure you pick up the phone.
it's easy to work with people who understand how you think. Who feel your passion and desire. It becomes easy. Pastor Eunice Mamba, who was here, she has been leading one of our branches, which is also called Spiralwezu, meaning we lead by the word of God. Spiralwezu, Sidi, Sidi. She is the senior other than our Mami Bishop amongst the ladies who are ordained as pastors. She is a retired teacher by profession. She has served with my mother when they were leading the church with my father as the leader of the women's department. She is a pillar that comes a long way with my parents. She is not a young lady. So for her to choose to accompany us is a privilege and an honor. I actually told her I wanted to speak before I preach. Just in case you are thinking I'm traveling with the young people. No, we've got seniors also in the team. So please appreciate your Almighty God. And then, as you saw the people here, they are coming from different branches that we have. It's not all the branches that we have in the country. Like, as I've already said, Pastor Eunice, she's coming from Spilamese, which is our branch, which is in to the border with Devon. And then we have also one lady, Pastor Manesi Manyansi, who came with her members too. She's pastoring a branch at Loma Hasha, which is by the border with Mozambique. And then we've got uh, people from Bofu, CFCR, which is where Badung Wenya, who also said I must say his apology is not feeling well. They are from our branch, which is on their way to Nell Spring, the border towards Nell Spring. And then I've got uh, people from Babani CFCI, which is our branch in the capital. And then we've got finally Manzini CFCI church members. So it's a concussion of different because we want to spread the fire. Also, they are coming, doesn't come without challenges. Could be financial, it could be traveling document wise. It could be health-wise, but most of them who came here, they had to make sure they overcome certain challenges to make it possible. And even when we go home, right after the street, when they get to Manzini, it's not the end of the road. They still have to travel to their different locations, which is out of the city. So it's really a sacrifice, and I want to honor and salute them for for all the time. I stay in a place which is a village, a village for our tribe, the Nimawe people. It's, it's a bit different than staying in the city. We are ruled by the chief, who is a Nimawe, and there are certain guidelines and regulations that are expected of those that stay within the village. It is allowed to a people that are of different surnames to be resident in our area, but they have to follow certain protocols to be able to be accommodated amongst our people. Where I stay, when I was allocated land, I wanted land that would be different from the main family compound so that I can be able to do what is in my passion, which is farming, animal farming mostly. So, one of my elder brothers, when they were demarcating the land, the perimeters, they did not demarcate according to the family agreements. Which means they went short and never went through the right corners. So my land was cut a little bit short. So when the seniors of the village came to confirm, they were showed 
beacons which were not accurate. After the meeting, I asked my brothers, so what's going to happen? Because he did not go according to what the family elders had said. They said, no, don't worry, it's our land. I mean, it's not that we're encroaching on somebody's land, it's still our land. So you can still push your, your fence to where we said you should. Lo and behold, I did that. I put my four pillars, my four corners at the exact spot where I was supposed to. I did not know that the next week a war would break out with some of the extended family members, young boys, who started quarreling and fighting with me concerning the demarcation of the land. The situation was so bad such that every Saturday weekend when I come to work clear the land or erect the wall, the, the boundaries, they would actually be pulling down the poles and pushing the fence. So every Tuesday or Wednesday I come to erect on Saturday they bring the poles down. I told the elders of the community what was happening. They said my family needs to make a formal complaint. I told my dad, the bishop, what was happening, but as usual, he dragged his feet, and uh, I had to do what I needed to do. One year down the line, the issue was still hot. I couldn't do any work. And the next thing I hear, a case has been opened for me at the chief's place. I must now come answer charges of taking more what I was given. I went to my senior brother and I said, this is what I was afraid about. What's going to happen now? And coincidentally, my elder brother was the secretary of the leadership. Now you would expect that when my case is called upon, my brother will be helping me because he's actually the one who said, increase the land. I was called in front of a lot of people, the community, and the charges were laid. And of course, unbelievers were excited to tear down the, the man of God, who is a liar, a cheater, and a stealer. It's just new in the village because I grew up in the city part. So they thought I was just bragging that I had money, so I blamed. The case did not finish over one day. It dragged for about a month or so. And then I told my father, things are not getting, are not getting better. You need to do something. So he said, it's okay. I'm going to come with you in the next meeting. The next meeting, they call my name to come so that the case continues. And of course, people are excited because one of the seniors actually said, since he's already started constructing let, let him let him take the building and put it somewhere else. <laughs> That's how impractical some people in the village can be. And another one said, yeah, even a pencil in a school has got an eraser at the back. Let him erase everything that he has done. I mean, really, really. What can you say? These are elders. Then, in the meeting, my father raised up his hand. So they, they called him up to come. So they said, what do you want to say? He said in the meeting, my people, since you know in our culture, it is said that no one is expected to carry a charge or a case against a son if his father is still alive. Whatever crimes a child commits in the village, the parent is responsible. So if there's anything that my son has done wrong, I am the one to be charged. Now, here is the interesting part. My father is not just a man in our village, in our country. He is Consider the father in the land. The chief himself concerns and he knows who he is. 
So now they are like, no. We you pay our children. You pay our children. You, who is he? To you. So this is my first point, son. And then the Imhuna, the second in command of the chief said, there is no way that we can charge the bishop with the case. Because this is our place in the village. We are actually stabbing ourselves with a knife in the heart. Bishop, there's no case. You and your son are released. I escaped the brutality of unbelievers and people who wanted to see my downfall. Because I had a father. I don't know what could have happened of me, but even today the respect I get when I'm driving out, they know who I am. This is the bishop, sir. There are doors that open for me even in ministry because they know my father. There are favors in life I get because of who my father is. Today, I want to do what we call in Bible school a biographical sermon. Biographical from biography. We are going to be looking at the life mostly of Absalom. There is a pastor in our country from the village, but pastoring a very thriving church, making a lot of airwaves in our country and really shaking the land. He normally writes on social media, on WhatsApp and Facebook, some articles every week that he writes to his church, but they are beneficial to all of us. They are more like devotionals. And every time when he's writing those articles, he, he uses the title from the Apostle's Desk. He's an apostle by calling. So he, he writes these messages to his congregants, trying to help them understand his heart, his vision, his thought, while he's in his office. So this morning I want to title my sermon from the Apostle's desk. I want to invite you to Mommy's office. I want us to see her private journal. I want us to study her secret notes. I want us to have a peek of her private diary. I want us to explore her unspoken feelings. I want us to explore her unspoken thoughts. I want us to, to, to try to fit on her tight shoes. And by the way, my wife said I should tell you. And the reason she is not putting in high heel shoes is that she's trying to be She does put these. So just in case you thought she's a flat woman, no, no, no. She's, she's this tall. When she's putting her in. Yeah, yeah. So just in case. You know, because I told you, we scan. I know that when we come in, we scan. Eh? No, she can also go higher. Desk. There's a scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2 that says, Timothy, my son, actually Paul is writing this letter and he's addressing it and he says to Timothy, my true son in the faith. I want you to hold on that part. To Timothy, my true son in the faith, which is Timothy was not a biological son. They were not in any way related by blood with Paul. But in the faith, Paul becomes a father and Timothy becomes a son. And I like the description. He says to Timothy, my true, which means you can have false Still in the faith. They are your sons, but they, they are faulty. They have problems. They, 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 always, they always don't behave like. They can always, always escape like they are kumalos and yet they are kumalos. They are pandas and yet they are sibandas. 
they are not true. So Paul says to Timothy, who is my true son in the faith. When we are coming in God's house and God's work, there is a kind of relationship that we assume where our leader becomes our father, our mother, and we become sons and daughters. And when we fail to recognize and appreciate the relationship, we will have chaos in the house of God. When we go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 20 to 22, again Paul writes about Timothy to a different church, a different setup, a different time, but still talking about the same person. Now he says, speaking of Timothy, for I have no one like minded who will sincerely care for your state. For everyone is concerned about their own well-being. I have no one like Timothy who will care genuinely for your sake because the sons that I have, they care about their own well-being. But Timothy is a different kind of son. He is the son My translation says, but you know that Timothy has proved himself. Timothy has what? Has proved him. So I don't like him because I favor him. I don't like him because I just put him in the forefront. No, this boy has proved himself. Sometimes there's commotion and chaos in church because when mommy discharges work, it seems like there are special people that she brings to us. No, sometimes and most of the times, these people have proved their sense of loyalty. Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has said with me, in the gospel, in the work of the gospel. So, as a son, Timothy has what? Has served with me. Other translations say, Timothy has served alongside me. So, if you are saying you are a son at RCCI, where is the evidence? If, if you are saying you are a daughter of the vision, where is the evidence? Talk is cheap. Where is the evidence that distinguishes you from false sons to true sons? Just coming to church doesn't mean you are saving. Timothy, my true son, he has proved. He has saved. He didn't come to be saved. He has saved. He here has not come for his welfare. He has come for the people's welfare. When you come, are you interested in lifting up people? Are you interested in seeing others better than you? Are you interested in having them have their way and then you follow? Are you interested in supporting them even if you don't get support? Or is it about you? Timothy, my true son, he has proved himself. How, how is it with you? How is your track record? We started on Monday and we are finishing today. How many sessions did you attend? What time do you leave? What time do you come? What time do you arrive? And when do you leave? Because a visitor and a son, they can't behave differently. And they can't arrive at the same time. And they can't depart at the same time. 
We need to be straight out and have the titles and sit in front. You see, the people that trouble us the most are the ones that sit in front. The titles are in the front. Yeah. They are our 
brothers and sisters who are blessed by God financially, are they not a problem? Are they not sleep happy? They, they are very touchy. When the person is preaching or teaching, she must be careful not to step on their toe because the process won't come in. When you try to come between me and my husband, you make my work difficult. There are some sons who identify a weakness in Pastor Sam's life, either by the way he serves or by the way he does things. And then the, the son now comes in as a substitute who is better than the spouse. To say, if he didn't come to church on Sunday, it's okay. I will do his job. Then there are other sons who just want to divide and conquer. We love Mami, but we don't understand Pastor Sam. See, you can't have one over the other. It's a good package. If you love mommy, you must nurse your grudges and your pain to love Pastor Sam. So when you intentionally try to come in between them, you are making her life difficult. When you are my son and your revelation catches me by surprise, you cause me to have a heart attack. The resignation of any son from RCCI vision must never be a surprise to the leader and to the congregants. Oh, do we really have me? I mean, I'm very proud of you. Because there was a time when there was an exodus in this movement. And I was afraid you were going to leave. You disappeared for a while. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. To me, that you, you had a good reason to go. You had a very good reason to go. But I don't know how God convinced you anyone to say this thing. And for that, we honor you and support you. Yeah, 
and he has proved himself. I don't know what it can't work. If they have left, don't allow them to be pee I was said We heard that she was now hospitalized. Is she still as sick as during our day?
He is talking to the commander of the army to say, I want to see my father. So if he thinks I am wrong, then let him kill him. What is he saying? I believe that though I am wrong, my father doesn't have the guts to kill me. Which of course is true because it is biological son. Remember when Joel is supposed to be chasing after Absalom, he says to the army commanders, when you find my son, do not hurt my son. And when he's found stuck with his head on the branch, Joel says, this is our time. They throw a spear over his heart. But what was the father's heart? I know he has hurt me. I know he has degraded me. I know
Absalom say, Come so that I may see you. No, that's not. He said, Listen, when Amnon is drunk and is in high spirit, strike him down and kill him. Don't be afraid. This is his own brother. He says, When Absalom We are talking about sons, aren't we? We are talking about sons, aren't we? Let's read together. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Cain. These three were the sons of Noah. And from these the whole earth was populated. And Noah began to be a father, and 
they planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham and the father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth, they took a garment and laid it on both their shoulders and went forward backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were taken away and they did not see their father's nakedness. Continue. So Noah woke up from his wine and knew what his sons had done to him. Then he said, Cast be Canaan, and seven of seven shall he be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlighten Shepheth, and may he dwell in the tent of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. No one in the beginning, the Bible says, God wanted to destroy mankind. And when he looked at the world, there was no one that was doing right except one man, Noah. And Noah found favor with God. And as a man that was favored by God, God said, I do not want to kill you, but I want to rescue you. And through you, I want to begin a new nation. I want to repopulate the earth by using you as my catalyst. So God said, I want you to build an ark. And I want you to get your family and get all the animals according to their different kinds so that I can restart life with you. So this is a man that was favored by God. This is a man that was loved by God. This is a man that was trusted by God to reactivate a new plan for mankind. But the Bible says, even though no one was the best man, even though no one was the chosen man of God, even though no one was the representative of God, even though no one was to be the image of what God was looking for in humankind, it came a time that no one became a farmer. And when he became Yeah. 
but the fellow is naked. And he goes out and saw the father. He said, hey,
is faced with the death with the Amalekites in the book of Exodus. And the Bible says Moses had to sit by the top of the mountain and stand and raise up his hands and draw his son was bound by the veil and had to fight the Amalekites. The two did not see each other. But the two needed to occupy a strategic position against a common enemy. One was a spiritual position which was they could not see though they were assisting they were not privileged to see what others don't see they now could spend what others can't spend be very careful when your pastor builds it Be careful when your pastor brings his close to where they live. Because you will see privilege for which watch out. Watch out what you do when you see and hear because you close. And they put a chair and made him. It wasn't Moses who said, Bring a chair for me. The son recognized he's tired. What, what can we find? What can we get so that he can continue to say he's called? Well, what is our part? Their part was not to fight with Joshua, their part was to hold them steady. That their base was to hold them steady. Their base was to hold them there. And Joshua's base was to keep fighting. Keep healing. And Moses was to keep them raising. Our positions will never be the same. Amen. Please, please be okay with the way you are. Please be satisfied with where God is. Please, minister, please smile. Minister.
Father, I speak to ignite 
para ir a Yupi. Even today, some have given from their poverty. Others have given from their abundance. Others have not been able to give, but their heart is willing. You see their heart. And I pray that through the power of your word, you honor what you promise that blessed is the hand of Jesus than the one that you see. May they receive a divine blessing from you. Father, we pray for the continual success of this vision. We pray for the multiplication of true sins in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, for, for the multiplication of the spirit of loyalty amongst the people. That subscribe to this vision. Father, we pray for the leadership. May they catch the heart of the spirit of the visionaries. We pray for Pastor Seth and Pastor Hilda in the name of Jesus. Father, continue to protect them, continue to promote them, continue to provide for them. Father, we say, Surely. Say after me, Surely. Goodness and mercy. We will follow you. All the days of my life. Dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.
My sister in Paul has the kitchen and my heart. And my wife recently joined them. Let them sit there. Serve best. Pedro, my brother. Serve best here. That's where you are called. So let's go out in this country to something and say, Lord, I will never be having a personal spirit. I will be a pill of strength, my pastor. I will never expose weaknesses. Pastor Ashley, Pastor Loki, intercessors. That's where you were born. You need to serve the best. When prayers are required, you must not let because you are there. But the moment with some of us, if we we stand away, we don't feel our position, the weakness will be exposed. Even those who are facing, remember, as I said, there were people who were facing. It was revelation he found. Even those who are facing us as artists, they will never be amount anything. They will celebrate because they, when they hear it, they will call you. We had mommy sick again. What do you say? Because we are accomplishing the word of God. 